Welcome to Wadsworth History on Film, a program presented by the Wadsworth Area Historical Society and designed to record the oral history of Wadsworth for posterity. I'm Cesar Carino, your host, and our guest today is a very, very well-known figure in Wadsworth, John Hanna. Now, we've interviewed John Hanna before as a mayor. However, we don't know anything about his personal life. So today we're going to try to get into his personal life and find out about the Hanna family here in Wadsworth many, many years ago. But John, how about starting right off by telling us who you are, where you were born, brothers, sisters, father, mother, all those kinds of things. I was born right here in Wadsworth. Right, and when? Uh, 1937. 37, so that makes you uh, almost 68 years old. I right? turned 68 last week. You're 68 last week, so you're 68 years old. Yeah, but I like to think, uh, I'm like Bob Gerbrick, and I have, uh, a, a, what do you call it, a national phenomenon, or natural phenomenon, you got the body of a 29. About a body of a 29-year-old. Bob Gerbrick does have a body of a 29-year-old person. We've interviewed Bob Gerbrick, as you well know, and at age, um, 70-something, isn't he? He's the same age as I am. Oh, same age as you, yeah. 68. He's still riding motorcycles. Yeah, right. in fact, he's in Daytona right now. He's in Daytona. Now, you don't ride motorcycles. No, right no, I had one a year ago, and I sold it. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the early childhood days. I mean, we'll start off by telling us, brothers and sisters, who they are, where they are, and so forth, and then go back to parents. Okay, my, uh, I have a brother and a sister. My brother's four years younger than me, David, and he lives in, uh, outside of Hagerstown, Maryland. He retired here about three years ago. My sister lives in Medina, and she works for our auditor mm -hmm. and really enjoys the job. And uh, she's married to? Oh, Randy Heller. Randy her, Heller. Her, her married name is Heller, Joan Heller, and I see her quite often. I've taken up cooking. So uh, I try to invite her and her husband every week or every other week on a Thursday. That's my wife works at the bakery, uh, a still, and uh, she. Uh, I try to cook Thursday. So it's fun. It's a hobby. Oh yeah. Well, we'll f hear more about that word bakery here in a couple of minutes as well. And go back to um, mom and dad now. Okay. It was Art. Uh, Art Hannah was my father, and, and uh, Gail with my mother, and her maiden name was Long. Uh, there's several Longs around here that... Uh, How about telling us which Long family she belongs to? Well, it was Ned Long was her brother. Ned Long. Bud Long had the store in uh, Sellers and Long in Creston, Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, Nellie, yep. Nellie Leatherman, uh, uh, not Leatherman, no. I'm sorry. No. Nellie Love was, Love. Yeah. was my aunt, and and uh, I had an aunt in Newark, Ohio, Madge. I had uh, an aunt in uh, Dravenstadt. Who was uh, mm -hmm. I had? She, I think there were nine of them. Now, uh, your aunt, uh, the Dravenstadt, uh, she was handicapped, wasn't she? Toward the end, yeah. not. And Bud's wife was handicapped. She had a bad hip and walked real. Mm -hmm. And her name, was, maiden name, was Sellers. It was a big store over in Creston. All right. What, um, Ned Long, tell us about Ned Long's relationship to Wadsworth. <laughs> he is a character. I he, know he's you a character. might say he was a town character. Yeah. He would imbibe from time to time. Well. <laughs> and he uh, had uh, three kids. Uh, he had a grocery, several grocery stores in Wadsworth. He had them in Ripman. He was a heck of a butcher. Now, where were the grocery stores in Wadsworth, Ned Long's grocery stores in Wadsworth? Well, he had one in the south end. But tell us, you know, geographically, because it's not there anymore. No, it's hard to. There's a, I was going to say by the, the beer joint. Well, start coming start this the railroad side of track. Railroad tracks coming this way. We're at the railroad town. track, and north of the railroad track, the very first building is the, what you call the beer joint. Mm -hmm. A was bar. With the bar. And then there's one more building. That was his. That was his. That was and his that actually had <coughs> several stores in it. I oh, mean, yeah. Several uh, grocery stores in it. And uh, Ned Long was there in the, what, uh, 20s and 30s, wasn't he? Uh, no, he was there later. Oh, was he later than the yeah, Buami boys a, were there first? Yeah, time. I think in the 40s. Okay, 40s. all right, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Because the Buamis were there before that, and then. And he had the East Street right Market. There. East Street Market, right? Yeah. Where was that? Tell well, us that's almost to the end of East Street, to going on toward Broad, mm -hmm. and uh, a little. I think there's a uh, a guy that repairs washing machines right. and stuff there now. Uh, it was right next door to Delbert's. Yeah. Well, it was Delbert's. Mm -hmm. 
You remember that? Yes, that was when I grew up. But Delberts was in there. Uh, Delbert Moats was Motes. his. Yeah, mm -hmm. they had a jewelry store downtown. Is what yeah. it was. Moats. Ger uh, Delbert was was severely handicapped. Yeah, he had um, multiple handicaps. Yeah. So that was Ned Long. Yeah. That was your uncle. Yeah. And um, when did your parents come to Wadsworth? Well, uh, gee, I gotta think. I think my my dad might have been born here. I, you know, that's a good question. I, I, it's it was forever. We've been here. <laughs> uh, my mom and uh, him never lived anywhere else during their married life, pretty much. They lived Your dad would probably be very, very close to 95 years old now if you were living with me. Uh, boy, I'd have to go back and figure that out. He passed away in Florida. The last 25 years he lived in Florida. My mom and dad were divorced, and he had remarried a Canadian lady. And, uh, she was a nice person, uh, and uh, we went down to visit him several times. I don't really care for Florida. Oh, I don't either, but particularly. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, what, when do you think he might have been born? It runs in my mind that he was born in 1905, but I'm not positive. No, I think it was uh, 1911 or... 1910, not 1905. Yeah, 95 it, years old. Yeah, nine, 1910, I think. 1910. So uh, he'd be 11. Yeah. About 94, 95 years old. Like yeah, that, so. he really, uh, he really was just enjoyed Wadsworth. He and my mother was a, quite a bowler. Uh, she bowled on the uh, the guy that Jack uh, Jack Wooler was my brother's age, and then John Wooler was older than me. But he ran the Strand, Strand Theater and the uh, Star Star, and they uh, the man that owned the theaters uh, sites. Yeah, that's it. Uh, monitored them and sent them everywhere. They won a lot of tournaments. It was mm -hmm. Effie Miklas, uh, Ruth Mall. Uh, I had a picture, I got a picture at home, and we can identify five of the women, the sixth one we can't. I don't know who she is. You know, if you have a copy of that, the Historical Society would love to have it. And incidentally, while we're talking about the Historical Society, we have been given countless numbers of pictures, really. And um, all of them have a story behind them. Oh, yeah. And we're, uh, the ones that we can't figure out, we've been bringing people in to help us figure them out. Uh, but uh, Wadsworth history is in those pictures, that's right. Yeah. Tell us about, uh, a little bit about your mother's family besides um, uh, Uncle Ned. Well, they, uh, several of them settled right around here. They grew up later in their their youth, she was the youngest of all the children. And how many were there all together? I think there were nine. Nine kids. I, as a matter of fact, I think at one time, well, I'm, I'm going to have to reserve this because I'm not 100% positive. I think at one time, they were probably related to just about everyone in Wadsworth. <laughs> you know, I couldn't get away with nothing as a kid. No, they Everybody knew who I was and, and would tell my parents, so I I grew up a lot of supervision. So there, there are a lot of longs, and when I was growing up, we lived next to two different ones. Yeah, they weren't all related, though. There was they a, were not related, as, no. Uh, and uh, uh, Nancy Leatherman, she's still in town today, married to Howard. Uh, Pete Love is still in town. He's, uh, and Tom Long passed away a year ago, mm -hmm. uh, and his two sisters now don't live in town. Now tell us about Tom Long. There's a story there behind him oh, too. Oh, he's a character. He went, he went into service and then he uh, was an aircraft uh, controller, you know, worked in the control towers and he continued his career at that after he got out. And uh, he had like five children by his first wife and I think one or two by his second wife. So he went on with the big family thing. So, uh, and he was, uh, he wasn't very old. I don't, I think he was two years older than me. So he would have been about 68 when he passed away. Uh, had a lot of health problems. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then uh, my Aunt Vera, boy, she was one of the best cooks. Now Vera what? Was the first, uh, you know, I heard, Roberts was her maiden name, but she was from up around Cleveland. That was Ned's first wife, and they were married till she passed away. And yeah, we uh, it was really a uh, we had a lot of fun 
in, together as a Where'd family. Where did you live as a, as a child? Uh, on South Lyman. On South Lyman. Who were your neighbors? Uh, on the one side were Phrases. Which phrase was that? Uh, it was Leonard. Was Leonard Phrase? Yeah. He used he, to live on Durling Drive, though. No, that's a brother. Well, his brother's Leonard also? Yeah. I, I don't remember Durling Drive, uh, but I, as a young kid, real young, uh, he lived down there on South Lyman. And then... Uh, did he have a daughter? One. Susie was Susie. Her. And did she marry a Shelley? She lives on the East Coast. She married okay. somebody when she went oh, to she? college and lived in, I, I think, Boston or somewhere. Now, the reason there. I bring these things up is that now tonight I'll get a phone call and someone will straighten me out on this whole thing. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, don't take for gospel what I'm telling you either. I mean, it's just memory. You yeah, know. Well, Leonard Fraze um, lived on, on Durning Drive and he had a daughter and then she married uh, Carl, uh, Carl Shelley. I think Carl Shelley, I'm not positive. Well, We'll get that. We'll get that straight. Yeah, down. no, that. that I'm pretty sure that was a brother, a or brother? maybe a cousin. Uh, the phrases uh, they were good neighbors. Bruce grew up in the same age as David, my younger brother, and uh, he passed away while he was in college. Mm -hmm. Quite a brilliant kid. And they said, and Susie, there were just the two. And uh, then on the other side was Williams's. Which one? Which Williams? Uh, well. You know, <laughs> they were all older than me, and the one gal, uh, I bowled in a bowling league, and she was uh, told, come up and approached me and said, oh, I used to babysit you, and, and I said, well, I don't remember. Then there was Benny Lee on the next one up from him. Benny Lee? Yeah, and he was, uh, he, I think he worked a match shop, but he uh, was a beekeeper. That was kind of interesting. We, I uh, like to get those cones as a kid, mm -hmm. you know, that were honey in them that hadn't been spun out, and gee whiz, it was, but we got stung a lot. <laughs> I'm sure you would. <laughs> How about across the road or across the street from you? Well, there was a Sheevil that lived across the street, a Ray Sheevil, and uh, he still got kids around the area, a Judy and a Tom that I can, I don't know how many more were. Next was a rental property, but the, I think it was uh, the police chief was in there. And there, see how I lived there. It was... Uh, which, which chief? Tommy Lucas? No, he lived in Lucas Court. That okay. was, I think it was, uh, you say one here. And, uh, uh, Rod Donier? Yeah, I think it was Rod. And he lived there for a while. Yeah, then he bought a house. Yeah, he so, bought a house, but he, but he married, was, Rod Donier married a, um, an Irish girl, I believe. Oh yeah, she yeah she had an accent. You're right. Yes. Uh, and then the war bride. And I can't remember the next one. Uh, uh, that was another rental house. At one time, the Mustrick boys lived there. Uh, I think either in that house or the one next to it. There were Steve and George Mustrick. They uh, George went on to be a dentist, and Steve went on to be a doctor. There's vice versa. They had nothing. They were. Uh, and they were, uh, I don't know how they went to college. You know, it turned out to be really nice boys. Yeah, probably what, the way that many other people did, they uh, just you, worked. Yeah. And hard worker. You know, uh, the South End, um, some people turned their noses down at the South End. However, we have evidence of at least 10 college professors from the South End and at least two or three doctors. Oh. Yeah, I mean, those boys both were doctors, and they were raised. And several, there. several pharmacists, and yeah, oh. lawyers, yeah. They have some very good, very fine lawyers from the South End. Oh yeah, yeah. They, uh, they, they didn't have a lot of gold, but they surely had uh, a lot of uh, wisdom. Oh, all of them. Yeah, that's wonderful people. Yeah. Um, just a little bit more about uh, the neighborhood. Um, you lived on South Lyman Street all of your growing up days, so you therefore went to what school? Uh, Franklin. Franklin School. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who were the Who were the people there in Franklin School? Then? I gotta tell you, you know, the Ray Holcomb it belongs to Lions. I'm a Lion right. at there, and they had. I took uh, two of Jeff's kids to the. Uh, now tell us who Jeff is. Oh, Jeff's my uh, middle boy. He's okay. a dentist in town here, uh, to the uh, show to see the show choir. Mm -hmm. They have them in there every year. And really a big deal. And I said, people come over and we talked, and when it was all over, and I says, now don't 
don't leave, we're, or get up, we're going to sit here a minute and let the people clear out. I want you to meet uh, a man, uh, my teacher. And he, he said, oh, okay, Jeff, or uh, yeah, it's Jake's his name, but it's Jeffrey. And he's about, well, he just turned 10. This was two years ago. He was eight years old. And so we went over to meet Ray, and I said, Ray, I want you to meet two of my grandchildren. And uh, he would talk to them a little bit, and they would listen, and boy, looking, just look at him over, you wouldn't play. <laughs> well, we got out in the car, and he says, how old is, uh, is Ray Holcomb, Mr. Holcomb? And I says, you know, gee, I really don't know. He said, he must be old. <laughs> <laughs> he must be old. I told Ray that story. I said, it wasn't anything that he looked old, but he figured his grandfather went to school as a sixth right. grade teacher. Well, Ray is up in years. Yeah, and he's really good. Uh, yeah. uh, and uh, uh, there was a fourth grade, well, Mrs. Uh, Hartman. Miss Hartman. Miss Hartman. At that yeah, time. Yeah, she got re she's married. She married then. I run William. into her. I think she still lives in Medina. Or just on, lives on Route 57 on the way into Medina. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's still still very viable. And uh, she was was my art uh, music teacher. That's right. Mm -hmm. And just uh, nice. And she recognizes me. You know, when she sees me someplace. I was at a function as a mayor. And, she was playing the piano for the function yeah. mm -hmm. and up in Medina, and I just couldn't believe it. And uh, the other one was called Miss Barker at the time. She married a McCafferty then. Yes, um, mm -hmm. Helen. Yeah. Helen Barker McCafferty. She was my uh, fourth grade teacher. She has passed, since passed, uh, yeah. passed on. Yeah. Her husband then came to, well, they, as a matter of fact, her husband came to Wadsworth in 1945 and taught biology. And Miss Barker and Mr. McCafferty had a very um, professional relationship. Yeah. <laughs> but then they got married. Yeah. And, and uh, wonderful, wonderful couple. Yeah. I loved them both. Uh, and Helen McCafferty um, just exuded all of the things that a good teacher ought to exude. Oh, yeah. I think I got my first paddling from her, though. Well, good for her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she paddled the mayor. Well, there was, there was occasions the other teachers did this too, you know, mm -hmm. for, I, for no reason. I no, can I'm sure that there'd be no reason, John. No. <laughs> uh, we're going to get back to that childhood, but we, we must make sure that we get all of the kids' names, your children and your wife and oh. your grandchildren, and you don't dare forget one of them, John, <laughs> no. because if you do, it's going to be a problem. So let's start with wife. You got married when and to whom? Uh, it was uh, 57 uh, to a girl from Norton, uh, Josephine Slonovac. Spell that, please. S L A S L O. S L. I'm sorry, you're right. S L A, right? S L A N O V E C. Right. And where uh, does she live in Sh in, Sh in Norton? Well, she lived. <laughs> you almost said it on Sherman. Sherman. Right. Yeah. On uh, Hametown Road. Yeah. On the west side of the road. Yep. Uh, south of the railroad tracks. Uh, yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think the house is gone. It was tore down a few years mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have three boys. Uh, the oldest is John. He had Ann's Pastry for a while. He sold it last year. And then Jeffrey is a dentist in town. He has an office on Reimer Road. And then uh, Joe, which is the youngest, and he is, uh, works for Edward, uh, I gotta say it right, I got this mixed up one, A.G. Edwards, which is a stockbroker and he manages the Medina office. Mm -hmm. And he's done that ever since he's been out of college. Well, I have uh, nine grandchildren. I have uh, Joe has got five kids, and Jeff has four. I have uh, the oldest one. We, my wife just cherishes is the Lori Hanna. Mm -hmm. She is in Dayton University. Just I saw her grade card the other day, all four points. She, well, she went all the way through school as a four-point student. Oh, As a matter of fact, more. four point plus. Yeah, mm -hmm. because she was valedictorian of her Brilliant class. Brilliant kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she really, and she just is so personable. She just and really. Very humble and personable. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. She was, uh, she also was in, uh, I'm going to play the first quarter she was there. She uh, is in the dance ensemble. Now they have asked her to tutor in math mm -hmm. some uh, kids in the college that are having problems, and she said she would. I don't know where she gets, how do you have time left to do a four point, have a four point average? This is a brilliant girl. I, of course, as you well know, I had her oh. uh, for a few months as, as her principal and uh, 
Really impressed with the young girl. Just wonderful. Uh, the next one is, in age is, uh, is Joe, uh, her brother. This is uh, Joe's kids. And then AJ, oh my goodness, it's Austin Joseph is his name. And he, uh, but he goes by AJ. He has got, uh, he dances uh, with the God of Dance and then is in a tour de force and he enters contests and have won them. And well, Lori did too. Did oh, you? they were both in there, yes. And she did that till she graduates and you're out. But AJ started uh, at a very young age and when he applied to, you have to try out to get into tour de force. And they put on, well, you've been there. You've seen Time them. and again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just got loads of talent, and he loves it. And then there's uh, Benjamin, <laughs> Ben, <laughs> big Ben. He's 10-year-old. And Joe, uh, Joe's, uh, and uh, Jeff's got a 10-year-old, too, a boy. And they're like 20 days apart, their birthday. Mm -hmm. And they are close. Oh my goodness! I like to when we have a family gathering when they're both there. I like to try to sit next to them to hear what they're saying, but they don't talk loud. Enough. They don't talk loudly enough. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, there's uh, after uh, Ben. They, he's uh, he's the ten year old. They just turned ten in January. Both of them, their days, uh, birthdays aren't very far apart. Uh, then there's uh, Sam, Samuel John. I got my name in one of them, and he's five or four and a half. And boy, what a character. I said, he must be as smart as Lori because he, he talks all the time. And Lori did that as a little <laughs> toddler and just chatters. You know where he's at all the time because mm -hmm. he's talking. He's talking. And then uh, in Jeff's, he has an 11-year-old daughter that is Alexa. And very tall and slender and she is going to be a, a tall girl. Mm -hmm. Jeff's kids are homeschooled. I don't agree with that, but I, I can't say anything about it. Well, you're on to the grandpa. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I should have more authority there. Yeah. And then, <laughs> then there's Jake, uh, which is Jeffrey Allen the second or something like that. And he's he's a ten year old, cute as a button. And then they have Austin. They they have another Austin. And uh, they asked Austin Hannah if uh, AJ if they could named their boy Austin. He was, he was greatly honored that I they would imagine, do this. surely. Yeah. And they, uh, uh, he's, he, there's a real character. I don't know what <laughs> some of these. And they have a young girl that's five, and their, their birthday's between Sam and her. Her name is uh, Avery. Uh, is very, uh, they're only 15 days apart. So, they ha it's quite a get together when when they get together. Right. Now, where where do the kids live, John? Okay, uh, Jeffrey lives uh, well <laughs> next door. I have since moved to Seville, and, uh, and Jeff lives on Seville also, which is Hubbard Valley Road. Mm -hmm. He had bought some land from uh, my uh, brother-in-law Joe that he had owned out there. and then he brother law Joe Slonovic. Yeah. But Joe Slonovic does not live there. He lives next to the airport, does he? Yeah, not? a Sky Park, sky park. Right, right up there. And uh, built a house, and Jeff found this house out there, and uh, uh, the next door, it, it, but it's about a mile away. But our properties touch. Mm -hmm. So my wife had told me at the time, I went through quite a period of illness there, and uh, she said, you would be the biggest couch potato. Well. I've got plenty to do now. I'm out there and I really enjoy it. So, uh, and Joe lives in, in Wadsworth here, out behind the hospital in that new allotment, and Johnny lives in that Slefko allotment up by the water tower in 261. Okay. And Now then, John, let's start with uh, 1957, you got married. And uh, trace your history from there to the present day uh, with all of the things that you have accomplished, um, and I say this with all affection because I come from the same background, for a South End boy. Yeah. Tell us all, all of the things you've accomplished. Well, I think my greatest accomplishment is we just talked about it, the yeah, children. Your, your children, that's right, absolutely. And, There's yeah, no greater accomplishment. Yeah, that's and great. that's, uh, that was just a, a joy watching them grow up. But Got the, married to Josie. Yeah. 1957. 
we, uh, we lived in Barberton a short time. I worked for Isley's, and then uh, I went to work for the injector, and I moved to Easton, and we moved to Wadsworth, and bought a house on Baldwin Street, and then... Uh, when uh, was that? What year was that? Boy, you're... I, I'd have to... You should have given me a heads up on it. <laughs> <laughs> I just was there. Uh, and uh, then we lived there, and the kids all grew up there, next door to uh, Yoakum's. And what, uh, what's Yoakum? Uh, it was bank, Gary, Gary. Bank, the bank president or the... No, no. Gary worked for the gas company, and he had uh, three children. Uh, there was Chris, and he works as a mechanic down at, for the Smithville school system, okay. uh, that school there. And then uh, it's, uh, Celinda, and uh, there was, oh, yeah, that was sad. Little girl was killed. Yeah. Uh, and across the street from uh, Freed's, uh, uh, D. Freed's parents. And uh, yeah, that was. And uh, my uncle had lived on Baldwin Street too, Loves. Mm -hmm. And uh, incidentally, Jack was, uh, uh, he retired professor from. Uh, uh, from Buffalo University, or another University. South End boy from yeah, yeah. A professor. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's now, right. Uh, John <coughs> Baldwin Street. Uh, tell us who the people were around you. Well, Don Hawk lived on the uh, west, west side. side. Yoakum's lived on the uh, next door to the other side. Right. So that we get this straight, there was a Yoakum family here about twenty years ago. The father actually was the manager or whatever they call that person at the First National Bank at that time, now it's the Huntington Bank. Yeah, no, it wasn't them. It's a, it's a different story yeah. altogether, right? It's a different yoke. And Lobenthal's lived on the next, the next house. And Lobenthal's were the teacher, and uh, Glenna yeah. Lobenthal, oh, they and were, everyone loved her. They were characters too. He was really, uh, and I had a little dog. Well, the, while the kids were growing up, and it spent more time at their house than it would at mine. Oh, really? Yeah, I'd tell the kids, go get that dog back again. And they'd feed it and take it in the house. It was a little chihuahua. And mm -hmm. they, well, we were very close. And then I think the next house was uh, O.J. Work. Uh, On Baldwin Street, yeah. yes. And he had one daughter. Um, um, hmm. And I know I went to school with her. It'll come to me in a second. And, and oh. that's about as far... Joanne. Joanne Mark. Oh, yeah. yeah. Joanne. And he... I was always scared of him. Why were you scared of him? Well, I wasn't the best kid in school <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'd go home before school was over. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did Well, we won't go into that. Yes, we are. <laughs> my, my kids, my, my grandkids, I was told them I was an A student. You were a, oh, oh, you're an A student. No, my, I, my biggest fear was that uh, Chuck Parson would come to my retirement party and bring up my grade cards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us about your being a neighbor to O.J. Work and how, how you felt about that since he had been your principal and oh. a very severe and strict principal. I, he'd always speak to me and really nice mm -hmm. and, oh boy, strict, that was true. Uh, then across the street, I've been trying to think of the name, the next house up from Freed's, going east, uh, him and that, the guy that lived there were real good friends and one day they're going to trim a tree. And them two older people, mm -hmm. I didn't say that at the time, but I said, they got up in that tree and with ladders and stuff and we're starting to cut the tree. I said, what are you guys doing? You gonna cut the whole tree down or what? Well, no, we just thought we'd trim it. I, it was funnier than heck. I finally called the grandson of the, uh, the other guy because I worked with him at the injector and uh, told him what the, they were doing and he come up and, Boy, took their ladders away and told them, you guys are way too old to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. And it was funny. Can you remember who that was? At, um, I can't. East of Defried? Yeah, it was just east of them. Oh, boy. Uh, but I, I'll i think of it, too, later. Yeah. And the cemetery was right behind yeah, us. Yeah, right, of course, but right behind you. And uh, the kids played over there all the time, and they, uh, there was a field that wasn't being used. It was quite 
large. They, we built baseball diamond for them back there. And it, it was a nice uh, neighborhood. The other side of Hawks were Dana Millers, and they had three boys. So there was loads of boys in that neighborhood. Yeah. And uh, somebody was crying all the time. I'm sure. That's true. It, you, now, you said that you worked at the injector for a while. How long did you work at the injector, and what did you do? Uh, I worked in the Forge shop. I and was the which? Forge. F Forge. Forge. Forge shop, right? Okay. Yeah, we uh, forged steel. That's nice, um, nice, cool work. <laughs> I was. Uh, I started out as a, uh, sawing the metal up into pieces that they could forge and heat, and I was in charge of saws. Then I went to be a heater, which you've charge of the furnace, and then... To get the top rate, you had to run eight hours, run the hammer itself. It was a 2,500-pound ram with a dies in it, and they took hot steel, we about 3,000 degrees, and forged it in, uh, into a... Uh, now, you say top wage. What was top wage? I think at the time it was probably about six fifty an hour. I'm surprised it was that high. Yeah, it was. I'm surprised it was that high. Yeah, I, as, but I didn't get that right away. I'm I, sure you wouldn't. Uh, and uh, it was several years. I think I worked. Uh, I worked at uh, the injector up here, and then they moved the Ford shop down with the foundry to Oroville. To Oroville. Called it Ohio mm -hmm. Products. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had, I think, five or seven years. Did and you go down to Oroville then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then when did you stop working at the injector? What did you do after that? I started to sell insurance. Started to sell insurance with the Western Southern. Okay, now you went door to door or what? Uh, they had routes, routes that you mm -hmm. book a debit route, and then I was uh, promoted to uh, a uh, supervisor. Had six men underneath me, and. Uh, I uh, didn't particularly like that, but I stuck it out for a few years. And then I, I got it with State Farm, and they were very good to me, as far as money and right. position. They allowed me to uh, get involved in politics. In fact, they encouraged it, mm -hmm. and it was surprising. But uh, met a lot of nice people. We'd go toward the end when I was mayor. Uh, we would go to Washington. Uh, oh, once or twice a year to lobby for State Farm and uh, the insurance industry. And of course, Amp Ohio, we go there also for that. So I made, with the, was going two and three times a year. Right. Now, before we go to the mayor's uh, or the politics part, tell us how you became involved with uh, Hannah Insurance. That was with State Farm. But yeah. how did you do that? I mean, did you... One uh, day I just called up. I called, uh, uh, looked in the yellow pages. I said, well, I think I might like a career with that. And uh, I don't have a college degree. Uh, uh, and they wanted college people. But I'd had experience with uh, Western Southern. And they said, okay, we'll take you. And uh, I did real well with them. And and uh, they uh, hired me, and I was in Barberton for one year, and then I moved to my house, and I moved to uh, downtown. And I was there for, I think I had 34 years when 34 I 34 years downtown. Now tell us geographically where it is. It's on the south side. It's still side. there. It still has. But it may not be there 50 years from now. Oh, that's true. <laughs> so. We could look out and see the gazebo, right? And it was on the south side of the gazebo. There, uh, that building, I did a lot of remodeling with that too. Uh, it was, uh, boy, I had some figures with that too. I don't know where they're at right now, but one of the oldest commercial buildings in town. Absolutely. Tell us about that, and tell us what you found when you start remodeling it. Well. Curtis, uh, Curtis Electric was next door. Their barber shop, when I purchased it, was in there, and I purchased. Tell it. us which Curtis it was. Uh, you know, I don't know. He always had that big Great Dane dog in there. <laughs> this, his, his wife, his wife was. Um, uh, it was his wife's dog. Eat popcorn like crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Dinah was her mate. Was her name? Yeah. She was a Neath. Oh. Dinah Neath. Curtis, yeah, yeah. and um, uh, the uh, Curtis um, who ran the store, 
No, it was not Dick Curtis. Uh, give me Roy Curtis. No, Roy Curtis was his father. Um, Roy Curtis was his father lived on South Main Street on the west side of the road, about a quarter of a mile south of the railroad tracks. Uh, it'll come to me in a second. Well, anytime, anyway, I started to remodel and I tore the, f the face off that they had put on, and there was this Curtis sign. I should have offered it to somebody, but anyhow, they, uh, when we, we did some remodeling, and I tried to get it registered in the buildings of uh, older, you know, right. and, and it wouldn't qualify because the level of the street had changed. Mm -hmm. A lot, and that was a grocery store. It was a uh, uh, gas station. Gas station was behind it. Well, the pumps, uh, the the uh, tanks were right out front in the street. Were they out in the yeah. front of the street? Yeah, yeah. and in the sidewalk because I had a little problem with that. It was a livery stable behind it. I knew the livery stable. Yeah, right. and, and it also used to be a, the uh, first audible, the first. Um, Oldsmobile agency in the United States, I believe, yeah. was out back there, Andy and, Abel. And they uh, also had upstairs, which there's no access to it, only a, a hole in the ceiling, it was a sign painter. And I knew who that was, but I can tell you right now, he had several posters up there. When I brought them down, they were in fantastic shape, and the librarian paid me handsomely for those. They were posters of tires, uh, Cooper tires, and I made out quite what well. Would a, what would the era have been, and what, how old would that person have been? Because they, one of the sign painters in Wadsworth, who was an outstanding sign painter, was Mort Miller. Yeah, Mort, I knew him. But well. was not he? No. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. I, it was somebody else. I, I had heard, but boy, I don't know if I'll ever remember that. No, that's been, uh, I tried to get as much history as I could, and I, I saved all of that uh, when I, because I knew I was going to try to apply for this uh, 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 designation to be in the registry of older buildings. But they then uh, wrote a book, somebody of the it's Wadsworth, and had in there the dates that, he, and that was that David Rodich, I think, had mm -hmm. got, uh, it was a little pamphlet, but it was published in, there was a lot in there, and he had the exact dates that that building was built. There was two buildings there, and uh, they were deeded. Now there's uh, State Farm still there. But anyhow, they were built not the same time. They were built two years apart. Really? Yeah, it was strange. It was kind what, of... Uh, what was the upstairs like? And Can you get up to the upstairs now? Uh, only through a... a crawl space that uh, you got to put a ladder up and then go through the ceiling. What was it like? It was uh, pretty much open, uh, had uh, some plastering in there and where they would made rooms and you could see old jars that were used for paints and stuff and uh, then the posters on the wall that I took down and uh, yeah that's pretty much it. Uh, there wasn't a lot of uh, finished. Their stairway was in the back where it come up through like uh, the back part of that building because mm -hmm. uh, it's in two levels that's just the front half that's that's finished. So you were in the insurance business for 34, 34 years. years. Now a while ago you mentioned Ann's Pastry. Tell us about Ann's oh. Pastry and how you, uh, your well, relationship with that. My, my oldest boy, I had bought Coons Building to where Coons Bakery was. Well, tell us where Coons Bakery was and tell us what uh, is there now and tell us geographically where it is. It's on the uh, west side of the square, southwest, and it's uh, almost, boy. To Watrusa. Yeah. It's, on uh, the south side of the... Where Louis Graff had his store, right. and it was next to that. It right, was very small. Very 20, narrow. Very 20 narrow. feet wide is mm -hmm. all it was. And, and I, Coons uh, was preceded by Cool's Bakery. He, Mr. Coon was getting old and ready to retire. I think he was close to 70, or he was in his 70s. And he said, I'm going to come to me because I own the building. He paid me rent. And he said, uh, he says, I'm going to have to close down. You better look for somebody else. I said, well, what's the problem? I can't get help. I said, I got a, Johnny was a senior. He was 16 and was driving. I said, I got a son. We want to 
see if he'll work for you. Yeah, send him around. Well, Johnny loved it. He, uh, he had a knack for it, Mr. Coon did, and then it was uh, when he graduated then, he worked as, he would, he would go to work and work Friday night, get up Saturday, I mean, get finished work Saturday and go with a band on contest. Well, he'd go for almost 20 some hours without sleeping. Without sleep. And he you could do that when you're 18. I think it makes it a big difference. <laughs> but he, uh, he come to me, Mr. Coon did, and he says, that kid's got a knack. You want to buy it, business? Well, I said, I better talk to him and my wife, too. I said, it's not easy to make that kind of a decision. I said, do you want to go to college? No, I don't. He said, I'd like that. So I, I, we financed him, and he bought the business. And he worked that for, I think, two years. And then he, he knew Mr. Bassicle, and he... Tell us who Mr. Bassicle is now. Uh, Mr. Bassicle started Ann's Pastry. Mm -hmm. He was from where? He come from Cleveland. Cleveland, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was another one, uh, Baker in town at that time. was Seuss. Yeah. Uh, was Millie was Frank Collins' first wife. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were all old characters. Gee. Well, anyhow, they, they, uh, he would talk to Mr. Bassicle and he was interested. And he was close to seven. Right. I'm going to spell Seuss or Sos, or Seuss, whatever. S yeah. O O S. Yeah. Some uh, people pronounce it sauce. Sauce, right. And as a matter of fact, um, I worked with Mr. S O O S's brother in law, and he pronounced it sauce, or Seuss, and they, some people call it sauce, but it's S O O S. Boy, he was a bread baker. And he was. And tell us where that bakery was in relationship to uh, Ann's Pastry. Ann's Pastry is on the, west, on the east side of um, High Street, about, what, 200, 300 feet uh, north of the square. And uh, the, the is Sauce's it, Bakery, or Seuss, was uh, almost directly across from my office. Right, but it's on the north side of the park. and um, There's a parking lot now. Parking lot, what, uh, 150 to 200 feet yeah. east of High Street. And it was a wooden building. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Mr. Basco had an all-masonry building. That tell us who Mr. Basco is. Oh, he's the one that had the bakery and uh, Ann's Pastry, and he started it. He Basical. Had, Basical. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he th moved into it, and I think that was a telephone office, Caesar? No, the telephone office is upstairs. Yeah, uh, but uh, it was all masonry, glazed tile in there, mm -hmm. and uh, of course easier to keep clean, and it was ideal for a bakery. So Johnny liked that idea, so he, he went over and talked to him, and we, uh, we made uh, a deal with Mr. Bassicle, and uh, Johnny had that, I think, 28 years. 28 years? Yeah, and he sold it this, just last year. Who purchased it? Let me need to know that for the historic. Uh, it was uh, uh, this gal named, uh, oh boy, well, Bill Simmons and uh, the gal. She, Bill bought the building, and then she bought the business, and they're kind of a partners in that. Uh, and uh, her name and I was Boone, and she was a Herger before that, uh, uh, Glenn Herger. Glenn Herger's daughter. Yeah, mm -hmm. at same age as Johnny, and she had worked for him, I think, six or seven Glenn, years. Glenn Herger's wife was Janet Freed. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Glenn talked real slow. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. He was a township trustee. I got a Wonderful person. Him. I went yeah. to school with him. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Well, he's a little bit behind me, but uh, we were in school, you know, somewhat contemporarily. Now, did you say a little while ago also that Josie, your wife, still works at the bakery? Oh, yeah. She, Tell us why she works at the bakery. Well, Johnny uh, didn't do any of the book work. She did it all. She did the ordering uh, or, or paying the bills and the payroll. She only, the only time we saw a tax guy was once a year. Mm -hmm. uh, she did quarterly reports and everything. But she also worked at the bakery selling the stuff and hiring and hiring the people out. Kind front. of the front office girl, yeah. as it were. Now, um, eight to five for the big. <laughs> what are those hours? She goes in now on Friday and Saturday at five in the morning. She's there. They're open. They're selling stuff, and she works till eleven thirty. 
on Friday and Saturday, and then she goes in Monday at 11 or noon and works till 5.30, and she does the same thing on Thursday. And what time does the baker himself or herself come in? Well, <laughs> that's a good question. Usually, Johnny would start at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock and work till he's finished, which would be 2 o'clock in the morning or 3. And on holidays, when they were really busy, he'd work uh, all 12, 14 hours. Right. In other words, um, for the cream sticks to be out there in the in the showcase. Well, they're certainly fresh because that was there's hours is all. There may be less than six hours right. when they're finished or four yeah, hours. That's great. Now we're gonna have to go back to some of your earlier days again for a couple minutes, John. <clears throat> what um, what actually got you involved in politics? Because we have a huge element of your life here that's been politically oriented. You know, and I've enjoyed all of it, too. I'm sure you did. Yeah. We, I was living on Baldwin Street at the time. And Bob Gerbrick, for what reason, I don't know, approached, uh, he came up there and I signed his petition to run for... Council. Yeah. And he wasn't elected. It was Ron Gerbrick. <laughs> 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 uh, and the next time uh, they were going to run, uh, J.D. Hansen invited me to the house, and we had several people that were going to run and stuff, and they, but they asked me. To but tell us who J.D. Henson was. Well, he was a mayor. Boy, I, I don't know how many. And he worked at the injector, so he already knew me and uh, knew my father. And he, uh, he's still living, but I think he, he lives on Park Street. Park Street. Yeah, and Kentucky spends a lot of time in Kentucky. Well, he's, he's originally from Kentucky. He's been here since 1939 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, uh, married uh, Cora Ford. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. And anyhow, they uh, they encouraged me to do this, so I run. Uh, I was. Uh, who was it, John? Who was at um, JD's house that night when you went? Boy, you would ask uh, the old stalwarts. Pretty much. Uh, Who were they? Yeah, uh, I got to think a minute. It was uh, well, Mid Johnson probably was there. The other one is uh, uh, up there in the North End that lived on uh, Good Street. What uh, it was Carpenter. Uh, June Sandals. June Sandals' or husband Bob. Bob and June. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I can't think who else. That they were always there. They were involved with politics since day one, and they still are. They were at the chili cook-off for Mike Kovac, mm -hmm. and I hadn't seen uh, Mid Johnson for quite a while. She, she was really, and it was a lot of fun. But the old old timers, uh, and I said, well, I have to ask my wife. So I went home, and she said, I don't care. You ain't gonna get elected anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did though. Yeah, yeah. I've lost. Uh, I've I had figured I was. Uh, I had hold every position in, in council, uh, councilman of ward, councilman at large, uh, and I lost one race. It was to Mike Jones in Ward Two. Uh, well, it was ward all one. Ward One. Ward One. Yeah, what well, included what we know now as part of Ward Two. Right. And. Uh, then I was very lucky and was elected, uh, and I was president of council. I'd been there for almost 10 years, and when Doc Daniels was mayor at the time, passed away, and the law at that time was that the president of council was automatically the mayor. It's not that way now. But uh, so I finished his term and then run for two more terms, and uh, really enjoyed it. it it got to be a lot of work. I was still working the insurance, too. But, uh, boy, they encouraged me. I got to tell you a story. Uh, State Farm, the, the vice president of Ohio, w was quite active in politics, but he was a Republican. But he sponsored Democrats, too. And I, I, he asked me would I put on a fundraiser for them, and then he sent out the invitations or or through the company, and or he did personally and paid for it, and, and judges and stuff. There was a judge, and I can't remember his name. He come down from Cleveland, and we had a fundraiser up at uh, 
the galaxy. And he uh, was Slovenian. And I says, boy, I said, you know, judge, I introduced myself, and I says, uh, Lambros. Probably. And he said to me, I said, you know, my wife's Slovenian, you know, just telling him when I met him. And he said, oh, you're a social climber. <laughs> 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 and that was funny. I remember that guy. He, and, and the other one that was impressive was uh, the gal that run for the Supreme Court in Wadsworth. Uh, and her her dad had started Sharon Country Club. That's uh, O'Neill. Oh, oh yes. Right. And he flew her all over the state. But mm -hmm. she come in there. And uh, I was introduced to her. And she's very, very prim, proper, and all. Oh. And she, I said, you know, I'm really excited when I found out I was going to do this and get involved with and uh, helping. And she said, oh, thanks, and, you know, Mr. Hannon and all this. And I said, yeah, I heard you're the first and only woman that ever played chair in country club. <laughs> they dressed her up as a boy, put her ball cap on no her. No kidding. Yeah, and, and she played 18, 18 holes. She is the daughter. She is the daughter of... Of um, uh, O'Neill, yeah, yeah, and of course he started the country club up there. Yeah, I, I I knew her personally, a lovely, lovely soul. She married a friend of mine, another attorney. Yes, right, mm -hmm. uh, Lytton. Uh, wonderful people, they really are. I and mean, she's been very politics notwithstanding, she's just a good person. Yeah, just a wonderful person. Tell us about your years as mayor. Tell us what happened. I mean, what happened? What well, what the happened? accomplishment I like to be involved with is right here. We, we uh, under my administration, and of course, not with my knowledge, but I, Bill Lyron told me, he says, boy, you make an excellent cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we put in the cable in Wadsworth and run the cable to the schools, every school, where they have the servers at the high school, and they can tap in. They even did this for Sacred Heart. Uh, I insisted they do that and because you know, it's part of Wadsworth. We all yeah. go to the same, same uh, well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, anyhow, that was probably my greatest. I had visions of going on further, but boy, I'll tell you, the state politics is something else. Well, it was very expensive, almost prohibitively expensive, unless you were I wanted independently to, wealthy. Yeah, I wanted to uh, put a phone system in. And, and be a hub here, and uh, they uh, they started to fight us something fierce down Well, actually, point. you know, the fact that we have cable in Wadsworth is almost unique. Well, it can't be almost unique. It either is unique or it isn't. But it is um, a rarity because shortly after you and Bill Lyron and others um, provided for this, the big cable companies started fighting furiously. Oh. And we are the only ones, well, there th I think there are three in Ohio. That's right. And maybe only four or five in the United States because the the big companies. And what really impressed me was the fact that we have one little, well, not one little attorney. We had one very competent attorney, Norman Bragg, who fought against rooms full, rooms full of attorneys. I watched him do it. And he beat them. And we still have it. So well, you great. know, it's like our electric company that we enjoy same, and watch. Right. The same principle. I I think the the city and and the citizens should own it. You know, it's it saved millions of dollars. Well, about a million dollars a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so the citizens of Walter, yeah. that is. Mm -hmm. Because of, if you still have a Warner Cable, you get it, enjoy a half price because of our That's right. mm -hmm. being here. Yes, because right across the, bottom, the, the boundary line, uh, over in Norton, it's the regular price and because they want to compete oh, with us. Yeah. So Wadsworth doesn't care one way or the other if you buy Warner or Wadsworth yeah, Cable. That's right. The fact is that you can get both of them for an inexpensive amount because the... Um, and they've won uh, this. Uh, a lot of people from other areas come in to, uh, to look at this uh, facility we have here for WCTV mm -hmm. and ask how we do it. Well, I know Medina uh, gets some money like from uh, their cable system up there. Mm -hmm. And they spend it in with the general fund. 
-hmm. Well, whoever was responsible, and I kind of think it was Bill, would never commingle those funds. Well, in a uh, statutory city as we have here in Wadsworth, not allowed to, you're not supposed to. I understand that there's at least one other city in the city of the state of Ohio that does commingle them. I don't know if that's true or not, but I know that legally you're not supposed well, to. Well, I that. think Canton does. does they it? get a franchi franchise fee and all kinds of things from there, and and Bill would keep that all separate. Yeah. But they might they, be a statutory. They might be a uh, charter city. Oh though. yeah, so sure. We're statutory. We have to. John, we need to get some more information about your um, your growing up days. You said something here a little while ago, and you don't want to talk about it. We're going to force the issue. Um, tell us about your school days. Oh, gee. You know, this year is unique. It is the 50th year. We're having our 50th it's class time, reunion next year. Uh, and uh, we really, it's, it's really enjoyable. And I, they, I started the, the ball rolling a couple months ago and had a meeting at my house. And then we've been meeting at Joe Ar Arpad's house. And I come home and I Nine, I meet at 6.30 because uh, Jim Rivers wants to meet and early. Uh, he's got all kind of singing that he's involved in. But anyhow, we're, I come home one night about 9.30 and I says, you know, I had a good time at the meeting, but we didn't accomplish a thing. Didn't accomplish oh, no, all we do is talk about old times. <laughs> and I said, well, I don't know how to get that. I got to get somebody there that's going to going to push the ball. Now, you remember some of the people that, with whom you were close friends in high school. Who were some of those people? Well, Donnie Basco. Okay. His Who else? name was originally Caracas. They changed it to Basco. And, uh, his name was originally what? Caracas. Caracas. Yeah. K-E-R-I-K-A-S was that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they, there's a whole story behind that. Yes. And mm -hmm. they, Mr. Basco was quite a man. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, and there was uh, uh, Dick Swagler in the South End, and uh, Daryl Steele uh, was in the South End, and, and well, they were all. You know, you went up, and then we made friends when we got to the high school. Uh, I'm trying to think of some more. Uh, yeah, yeah, and Joe Arpad was funny. He's he, he's involved in here in the WCTV or mm -hmm. are there public. He was in Bowling Green, and he involved with their, it was involved with their public television. Right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, We're going to be interviewing Joe Arpad very, oh, uh, he's very soon. By the way, I think that it was Roy Curtis, even though his father's name was Roy. But I think it was Roy Curtis. Oh, they had that? I'm almost positive. But I'll find out tonight. I'll get a phone call tonight <laughs> either correcting me or, or uh, affirming me, whichever. Tell us a little bit more about... Um, do you remember any incidents in high school of um, climbing over windows or anything like that, John? Well, I <laughs> approached Joe. I said, Joe, I think that uh, I remember one time we all got caught. Uh, we had taken off in a real nice spring afternoon that Gary Polk had a car. Not everybody had a car when we were in school. Mm -hmm. And it was Gary and Joe Arpad and myself and there was somebody else, Don Snyder, I think, and we drove to Ashland for no reason. It was just really nice. Well, we, uh, our, whatever excuse we had, didn't go over, and O.J. Uh, work uh, made us all stay after school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Joe, Joe Arpad was kind of a straight-laced guy. Oh, yeah. And he, uh, he said, yeah, I remember that. He said, that was nice, but we're going to spend the next couple of weeks after school here. You're, um, you're lucky that it was all only that, really. Uh, well, I, some of the other things, I remember when we was down at Franklin, uh, I think Donnie Basco lent me his BB gun, and we used, uh, took stick matches, and we'd pump it, uh, cock it, and take stick oh, matches, yes. and shoot it against the side of the building. And then, then they'd and explode. This, yeah, it was really nice. <laughs> Well, John, we have come to the end of the hour. Unfortunately, we can keep on this forever. Oh, but you're saved by the bell. You don't have to tell us any more of your nasty things that you did in school. <laughs> Boy, well, Ray, uh, Mr. Holcomb had paddled me too. I think I'm sure he would have. Yeah, but I don't know why. We are so pleased to have had an opportunity to talk with you, John. Uh, you have brought a great deal to Wadsworth, and we are appreciative. Thank you very much. Thank you, Caesar.